Uh, you say you follow Quran and the Sahih Hadith, no need of Imams and scholars. How can one person learn to understand Quran and Islam if it is not something from the scholars? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very good question, a very important question. Many people say that uh, you have to stick with someone and you have to follow the rules and regulation in order to learn someone. Well, if you know the Hadith of the Prophet uh, if we know the hadith of the Prophet where the Prophet said I am leaving uh, two things with you which is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet uh, so why would we need uh, the other education now one of the hadith is the Prophet Muad bin Jabal was going to the Yemen and the Prophet asked him how are you going to judge? I'm giving a commentary of the hadith. So the Ma'ad bin Jabal, he said that I'm going to judge from the Quran. And again, the Prophet asked him, What if you do not find the, the answer from the Quran? How would you judge? And then the Ma'ad bin Jabal said, I'm going to judge from the Quran and then from the Sunnah of the Prophet, what you have taught me. And for the third time, the Prophet asked him again the same question. What if you do not find something? The answer, uh, I haven't taught you anything about the topic that doesn't exist in the Quran or the Sunnah. How would you judge? Then Mu'ad bin Jabal said, I am going to use my own intellectual based on situation and based on many factors uh, according to the situation. Then I would make my own judgment. But I did that will not contradict the Quran and the, uh, the teachings of the Prophet but rather be neutral and I'm going to judge my own way rather than just asking someone and somebody said do that I'm going to do that but rather I'm going to do my own judgment then the Prophet said okay now you are on the right track well there is a no doubt that Islam has uh, reached to us through all the scholars and everyone up till today but we have to understand something our first source is the book of Allah that is the Quran our second source that is the, the Sunnah of the Prophet and because of the student of knowledge they are probably uh, aware of that there is a different categories when it comes to the Sunnah so there is a Zayif Hadith, there is a Marwatir Hadith and there is a Fabricated Hadith and there is a whole classification of the Hadith and it is it's like a whole uh, new uh, study of the science of a hadith to understand that then you make the conclusion that okay this is the sahih hadith so uh, what do I follow that I stick myself and I restrict myself to the Quran and the sahih hadith only and uh, everything else is an opinion I even myself I get the opinion from my seniors and then also I get my opinions and I try to uh, talk to other scholars and then we come to the conclusion okay this is something what is based on the Quran and the sahih hadith but uh, but we have to understand something. The most popular scholars were the four scholars Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ibn Hamal. May please and mercy be a blessing be a of Allah upon all, all of them. Um, they were the most popular, but they were not the only four scholars. There were many scholars, but these four were become the most uh, popular. For example, if somebody would ask me, uh, now this is something very important. If somebody would ask me, can I drink the water in a cup? I would say yes, you can drink it. And some other person would say, can I come, uh, can I drink my water with uh, uh, with my hand? I would say, okay, yeah, you can do that, it's permissible. If someone comes to me, can I drink my water in, uh, in the bottle? I would say, okay, yeah, you can do that. Because as long as it's not haram, you're not doing anything, but make it easy and make it better. And someone comes to me and he would say, can I drink my water in the bowl? I'll say, okay, you can drink it because it's not contradicting. So now how does all this prika and the sect becomes and the restricted themselves? Because for example, the person who came to me was asking me, can I drink the water into the cup? He said, okay, I'm, re I'm going to drink in a cup because the sheikh or this sheikh told me this he told me to drink the water in a cup now his generations and his students his followers his family members 
they restrict themselves to drink in a cup of water but rather it was just an opinion yes you can drink it is an opinion you can drink it in this one you can drink in that one but if you come to me can i drink a poison i would say no i'm sorry that you can drink it but if you ask me can i drink my water in a cup or the glass uh or in my hands or in a jug or in a bowl it is permissible to do that now what happens into that particular or lineage in that family in that uh, gathering that particular person let's say for an example Imam Humble came to me, Imam Shafi come to me, Imam uh, Abu Hanifa come to me and they would ask me okay can I do this uh, I would uh, I would say okay you can do that not behind that all these generations all these family members they stick to Imam Abu Hanifa because he said that he, it was his opinion okay you can do that now Imam Shafi he came to me and he would say okay can i drink into the cup or into the cup i would say okay you can do that now his followers now his family all they restricted them to the one of the person uh one of the scholars his background all his generation his followers they restrict them to into the cup and some of them restricted to the glass and some of them restricted to the uh into the hand and some other restricted to the ball and some other restricted to the jug so this is how they restricted themselves to them but rather if you just go back to the quran none of them is contradicting the quran none of them is contradicting the the teachings of the prophet sallallahu because this was the right opinion that was the right opinion that was the right opinion but that was well how does the problem start then the problem was started when all the people came after Imam Abu Hanifa Ramtulale, all the people coming behind their scholars, the Imams, their Muftis and whoever one there, they restricted themselves to them. And then what happens when the restrictions to the one thing, later there's a more editing to that, there's more editing to that, the more editing to that, editing, 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 and the whole thing changed. So rather, there was a broad opinion, yes, you can drink a water in a cup. You can drink a water in a glass, you can drink a water in a jug, and you can drink a water in a bowl, or whatever you drink. This is the contradiction of the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. So you can do whatever you want to do. This is how the the sect was being created later on, the generations and generations, because people restricted themselves to, I'm just going to follow this Shaykh, I'm just going to follow this Imam, and I'm just going to uh, follow this Maulana, and this I'm going to restrict that. Who said that you received that? The Prophet ﷺ did not say that. Because if you read in, uh, I believe it's Surah sort of Al-Inam, and when Allah, in verse number 153, where Allah says, uh, Say to the right path, that uh, the right path of Allah, the right path of the Prophet Wasallam, and all the paths are from Shaitan. So rather, you stick to the Quran and the Sahih Hadith and everything else, is an opinion i do not fall to any of my i do not fall to anyone but rather i did get my education from all the scholars and everything but rather then i make my own opinion what is from the quran what is sahih this and give my opinion broadly independently without restricting myself to anyone else <laughs> Thank you.